adjusting to whatever seasonal change you may be uh, facing right now, whether it's going into winter or going into summer. We're all under the uh, influence of change right now. So of course this can be a time of healing or a time of sorrow for some people. Either way, I hope you're doing well. Today I wanted to read to you as usual and I will be showing you some, I guess you could say, videos of my my life, of my week. <laughs> so I just record everything that I, or some of the things that I do during the week and show them to you guys. So this is kind of going to be a bit like an ASMR vlog. And uh, today I want to talk to you about Alban Arthen. So, every month I get sent something called a Guersu and it's from a Druidry course that I'm taking and I like to share some of the wisdom that I find in these contents with you because I hope that it can be entertaining, if not relaxing for you in the very least. So, um, with Druidry, to me I see it as a spirituality that is based in nature. So, let's go ahead and get started. Seeing as though Halloween has already come and gone so quickly, uh, I wanted to talk to you today about the winter solstice. So basically we're going to discuss the months leading up to Christmas. I've come to uh, know the seasons much closer in this last year. I think the main reason for that is because I've spent so much time out in nature. And so this fall, this autumn has been really profound for me in that I've, I feel very close to the, the change that is happening and that happens every year with planet Earth. And so it's forcing me to look even deeper into, into my life, into my surroundings and into the existential meaning of life to find value and to find meaning and to find motivation every day. I am an advocate for the summer. I love the sun so much. <laughs> and needless to say, I am sad when it goes away. However, I also have a deep reverence for winter time. Of course, I love autumn. The colours are spectacular, but none of them can compete with summer in my opinion. However, with winter, um, it is so very different from summertime that I really have to um, allow myself to plunge into the deeper introspection of my being to find motivation. <laughs> and winter time for me, especially with with the snow and with the the uh, emphasis that is placed on community and family through things like Christmas, is especially uh, magnificent and beautiful to me and it's something we don't have in the summertime so as with everything in life there is always good things and there is always bad things and everything balances out everything finds harmony in some way or another so the winter solstice is from the 21st of December and here we have a quote from Nguyen and it says Born is the sun <coughs> excuse me Born is the sun god as a dependent infant who in some mysterious way has managed to escape the powers of darkness seeking to destroy him while he was still in the cradle of winter. The survival of light through winter was symbolized by one tiny hair on the young child's head. As the birth of the sun took place in Capricorn, the child was often represented as being suckled by a goat. 
So the winter solstice ceremony of Druid tradition is known as Alban Orthen, which can be po poetically translated as the light of Arthur. I'm sure some of you remember I did a video all about Arthurian legends a few months ago when I was in Wales and now that I reflect back on it I think that it really instilled within me um, a, a deeper curiosity pertaining to the Arthurian legends again and um, this this is a great time to to reflect on those legends because it is uh, said to be the time that um, we we celebrate Arthur or we celebrate Jesus or whatever it is we celebrate doesn't matter what it is it's, it's something that is coming from a similar place so it says here Arthur is equated with the sun god who dies and is reborn as the Celtic son of light the maven at the winter solstice it is Arthur who will be reborn awakening from his slumbers in a secret cave in the Welsh mountains to return as saviour of the British Isles. The name of the ceremony therefore encapsulates or epitomises the essential theme of this rite. During the ceremony the apparent death of the sun is mourned and then as the fire is lit at the actual or symbolic time of the solstice the rebirth of the sun and by association the return of Arthur is celebrated. This is an old act indeed. The Christian nativity story is but a recent version of the theme of the sun's rebirth. It was only in 273 CE that the church officially fixed the birthday of Jesus at the time of midwinter. His birthday is not dated with the Gospels, but it is fitting that they made this choice, for Christ is the Sun God of the Piscean Age, and his birth should therefore be at a time of winter solstice. The Sun God Mithras of the Taurian Age was also born at the time of the shortest light and maximum darkness, and it is at this time that the mystery of death and resurrection or rebirth is acted out symbolically by the very planets themselves. The ceremony of Albanathen, Albanorthen, belongs traditionally to an open air setting, and particularly to any site with orientations towards the sunset and sunrise of the winter solstice sun. I feel like with with Druidry, I get inspired to to share it with you. And uh, that's not always going to be the case, of course. I am a renaissance soul and I change my hobbies all the time. Although I usually stick to the main, main three or four, four hobbies that I have. Anyways, um, if you would like to read these Guersu for yourself and find out more about Druidry, there will be a link below in the description to uh, Druidry website. So I think one of the other uh, significances, so to speak, of winter is that you recognise so much more readily that the sun is much further away. And this in itself, the absence of the sun, brings, of course, more of your uh, gratitude for when the sun finally comes back. And I think this is very much a staple of of life here on earth, um, or of life in the universe, in that every time, every time we, we experience something, the more we experience the same thing over and over again, and the easier it is for us to wish for something more, whereas when we take away the very thing that instills life into us, the sun, uh, we definitely mourn its its uh, absence, and I think when it comes back, it is probably one of the best feelings for me personally that I've ever felt in my in my being. Is just to 
welcome the sun, whether it's just from the darkness of night or whether it's from a whole winter's worth of darkness into coming into spring. In the way there is um, there is full uh, it feels like truth feels like truth is is the um, is the real meaning of the sun. <laughs> I'm not doing a very good job of explaining it. Uh, anyway, I'm going to read to you now. It says, From the dawn of time, human beings have hailed the return of the sun as an occasion of the highest significance, the promise and continuation of life on earth. In some of my darkest hours, what I find lifts me up is that very thing, the promise of continuation of life on the planet. Because we don't, we don't necessarily recognise every day how precious life is. And sometimes it takes, takes us having to experience some of the uh, more pain in life to, uh, to figure out that Life is a miracle all in, it, all in itself, simply because we are alive. We are a living planet. The earth continues to provide for us. The sun continues to shine. So it says, One ancient temple that still stands as a memorial to the importance of the solstice to the proto-druids of the Stone Age is Bro Naboin, the hostel of the river, river Boyne in County Meath, Ireland, which today we called, we call New Grange. So, as I was saying in the beginning of this video, um, I'm really plunging into the depths of what gives me motivation in life at the moment. And it's like I'm able to, by doing, in the very act of doing that, I'm able to uh, reevaluate what, what's important to me. And, you know, this year I, I feel like, with Christmas coming up, I have a new lease on life in that I can, I can connect with it even deeper. And I'm, I'm hoping that maybe you can do the same too. This year I, I tried to do a ritual ceremony for Halloween, so in. And unfortunately, I did more of the ritual during the planning of the ceremony than I did on the actual night of Samhain. However, that's not to say I haven't had uh, interesting things occur for me. And I'm hoping that Christmas time will be the same. I, I like the celebration, first and foremost, of the fact that even though everything is so dark and cold, and um, perhaps lonely in that there's, there's no more animals really around. The, the flora, the fauna, all of it's gone. And so we have to look within ourselves to find the, the beauty again. However, I think snow is a, is a very good bridging gap of, of that. When the land is covered in snow, to me, it's absolutely magical having everything be covered in this blanket, this cold, white blanket of ice and snow is uh, really magical. And so I guess I'll leave you guys with the idea of trying to think about what it is you're, you're looking forward to this Christmas. Trying to think about what it is that you're grateful about moving into this uh, new season and um, for me for me I think it's that I I'm looking forward to the warm feeling you get inside when you see that it's freezing cold outside and everything is nice and toasty warm indoors and the idea that Christmas celebrations bring bring more love, bring more giving, 
and receiving of love. Um, whether it be by pure tradition, societal norms, it doesn't matter. I think the act of celebrating Christmas, whether you, you buy gifts for people uh, not really wanting to, or whether you buy them very excitedly and uh, with lots of joy, either way, I think just the act of, of giving to other people in your family, with your friends, maybe even strangers, is a value that is so very important to the human race. And if we didn't have this, uh, this the potential to express love in this way, um, we would lose everything that makes us who we are. We would lose the very uh, thing that keeps us together as humans, the thing that inspires us and allows us to still be alive to this day and, and thriving as a planet and of course it's love and yeah Christmas time I think is a beautiful time to celebrate that and of course the story of, of Jesus is magical that's not to say that it's um where inspiration is to be solely gained, we can gain it from many sources. First and foremost, mine is in nature. Last winter time, for example, I, we, me and my partner, we made sure to wear at least three layers and some ski goggles and go outside and have some fun in the snow. So this year I'm looking forward to to running and jumping at my partner in the snow and playing like children. I'm also looking forward to buying gifts, trying to use my creativity to either make gifts for people or find the best possible gift for someone. It's kind of sad because I probably won't see my family this year, but that's what Skype is for. <laughs> so, uh, those are some of my reasons some of my, uh, some of the things I'm looking forward to this, this Christmas, this winter solstice. Um, I would love to hear yours. I'm sure some of you guys will think of things I could never think of. <laughs> Either way, um, thank you everyone for watching. I wish you. whatever it may be, and I'll speak to you very soon. Peace, love.